Uh, we're ready, Your Honor. All right. Uh, very good. Thank you, Mr. Ratcliffe. Yes, Your Honor. We're ready. Could you start my video? I sure will. It should come up. There you are. All right. Very good. And uh, announcements, uh, Mr. Tracy. Ready, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. And Mr. Keating. Ready, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Okay, with that, uh, let me get everyone who is going to testify in this uh, final trial uh, to which the case has been called. If you will raise your right hands to be sworn. Uh, I'll tell you what, put your hands down real quickly. My apologies. Let me call for the parents. Crystal Bates, Crystal Bates, Crystal Bates. What about Kenneth Boyette? Kenneth Boyette, Kenneth Boyette. <laughs> All right, if um, either of you or both of you are on a phone or phones, please press star six right now, unmute, announce your appearance, Crystal Bates, Kenneth Boyette. All right, no answer. I don't see, of all of the names, I don't see those, and nor do I see uh, any, any phones. Uh, actually, and no one is presently in the waiting room. Okay, so no parents are uh, present. Um, so we'll uh, get everybody sworn in again, if you don't mind raising your right hands again to be sworn. Do you all swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, whenever you're ready, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call uh, Tara Wright. All right. Would you go ahead yes. and state your name, please? My name is Tara Wright, and I'm the conservatorship caseworker on the case. Okay. And uh, Ms. Wright, first of all, how's the child doing? He's doing wonderful. Um, when we first got the case, it was kind of a rocky start. He was in withdrawals. Um, he needed ECI services. He didn't know how to properly latch to feed. Um, he was stiff. Um, he eventually was able to get his ECI services. He's been discharged from them. Um, he can crawl. She, I talked to the caregiver last night. He's now letting go of her hand to walk or to attempt to walk on his own. Um, he, he, he's doing so very, very well um, now and progressed so far over the last year. Um, if we could just keep him well, he goes to daycare and I think he catches every little thing that they have go through there. So, uh, you know, if I can hear that he's well more often, I would be really happy. But other than that, he is just doing amazing in his home. Okay. And you uh, mentioned about him, you um, or that he's not having the withdrawals, but was he born with uh, drugs in his system? Yes, he was. Yeah. And would those be drugs that would be very concerning? Very, yes. Okay. And how old is he now? He turned one year old, December 30th. Okay. Now, um, what is the permanency goal for him? Unrelated adoption with a concurrent goal of unrelated conservatorship. Okay. Now, um, as far as, um, I guess, parental um, involvement, first of all, um, let's start with uh, the mother. Uh, were you able to have any contact with the mother at all? I have had no official in-person visits with her. We're supposed to do monthly visits. There have been none. Um, at the beginning of the case, there was a couple of phone calls. Um, I don't have a current number from her. Um, middle of the case, she was responding by email. They no longer respond by email. Um, they haven't hardly attended any visits with the child virtually. 
They were unable to do in-person visits because they would not test for the department, either with the UA, hair, or oral. Um, so I've had very, very little contact with, with either parent. Okay. So um, is it fair to say you've not been able to discuss uh, with the, well, first of all, when you did have, um, I believe you said maybe you had some initial contact, did you discuss with her um, the situation with the baby and the withdrawals and her drug use? Um, she denied everything. Um, even her drug test and the baby's positive test um, were, were denied. Okay. Now, uh, she tested positive, too, at the hospital. Is that correct? She tested positive at the hospital as well. Once they made it back from Tennessee during the investigation portion, she tested for them as well, and she also tested positive then. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, Tennessee. Can you kind of explain just a, a little bit about the connection to Tennessee? He was born in Tennessee, but the parents lived here in um, Buna and or Kirbyville. Um, they, once the baby was born, Tennessee called into case, but once they realized that their home address was Texas, um, they contacted us. We were in contact with them. Um, and um, some family members went to Tennessee to supervise visitation with um, the parents to get the baby back here to Texas. And then okay. he's been back in Texas ever since. Okay. And now was he um, ever hospitalized here in Texas? No, he was not. Okay. Was the mother hospitalized here in Texas? Um, she was reportedly hospitalized, I think, approximately six times um, after the birth um, with complications to her C-section. Okay. All right. Now, you said uh, there hadn't been uh, much interaction um, with the mother, but I want to... Um, I guess go over with you a little bit um, about your attempt, at least your attempted contacts with her, and in particular um, the drug testing. So, when did you you recall when you first asked her to drug test after um, you made an initial contact? Um, during the investigation stage, she went um, Jan at the beginning of January the eleventh. And then once I took over the case, I requested her um, and Mr. Boyett to go on the 27th of January. I spoke to them personally. They said they would go, but they never did show up. Okay. So during the investigation stage uh, in January of 2022, she did test and was the results of those tests, um, and I say those tests, was it a UA and a hair test? Yes, it was a UA and a hair follicle for both parents. Okay. And were those uh, drug test results concerning? Yes, they were. And in addition to uh, the concerning drug, were there other drugs that were of concern? Yes, and, and mom's test was positive for something other than the most concerning drug we see. Okay. Now, after uh, January the 11th, um, did you ask her or contact her in regards to another test for January um, of 2022? We usually send them twice a month. So those were her two for January. And then we attempted to send her in February. Okay. Now you said those were her two in January. Were those the only two that was asked of her to take that UA and hair test? Or was there a second test in January she was asked to take? From what I can recall, there was a UA and a hair follicle on January 11th and then a subsequent UA later in the month in January. Okay. So did she go and take that second test for January? No, she did not. Okay. When was she asked? after January to go and test? 
in February. I've requested her to go twice a month when I could contact her for the entire case. And she's never drug tested for me. Okay. So, and just to make sure, um, so for the months of February, you requested it twice. She did not show. Is that correct? That's correct. For the month of March, you requested twice and she did not show. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, um, did you have any contact with her after these uh, January, February, and March when she uh, did not go? Were you able to make contact with her to see if she had any reasons as to why she didn't go? Um. I was not able to speak with her about it. Um, I would leave voicemails for her to contact me back and text messages. And then eventually I had to resort to using email to try to connect with her. Okay. So through March, no, 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 um, no luck with getting her to drug test. In April, you asked twice. Is that correct? Now, did you also contact her in regards to a visit during that month? Uh, I would have to refer to my notes, but yes, her okay. they they've had a standard visitation schedule this entire case weekly with the okay. child. But she responded in regards to a visit, but not in regards to taking the drug test. Correct, and they were all in the same message, so okay. I know she read it, but she didn't respond to it. Okay, and in Ju the months of July, August, and September, did you request twice a month? and she did not test. That is correct. And again, we're still in um, uh, 22. Um, yes. For October, November, and December of 2022, did you ask her or get word to her and ask her sub to submit to drug testing? Um. Uh, by September, I no longer had a phone number for her. She would not provide me one. Um, so I had no way to request drug testing unless I sent it by email. Um, she would never respond to those emails um, and say that she, she got the message, um, but she would respond to that same email about visitation. Okay. And... Now, it says um, January the 5th, a note that I have, that she was requested to test again, and that was after December. So would that have been January of this year you requested to try to contact her? That, mean, that, should, be the that should be 2023. Okay. And So she hasn't tested uh, in January this month either. Okay. Did she respond to you at all? No, she hasn't responded to anything uh, since her last visit. Okay. When was the last time you actually had direct phone contact where you actually heard her voice? It was pretty early on in the case, um, shortly after he was removed from his first home, his first kinship home. Okay. And has she, you said that she would respond as far as visits. Um, did she make the initial, any initial attempts to contact you? Or was it you contacting her in regards to drug testing and visitations that you would, that she would respond to? In other words, has she initiated any contacts with you? Most of the contact has been initiated by me. Occasionally, I would get a message back several days after an email I sent to her requesting a visit. Okay. Now, was she aware? Well, first of all, let me ask it this way. Was there a service plan created for her filed with the court and made an order of the court? Yes, there was. And do you know whether or not she was aware of that uh, service plan? Yes, she was aware. Okay. Did you review the plan with her? I was not able to, uh, to review the entire plan with her due to her just 
not being interested or willing to talk to me. Um, she has been provided it uh, in person, an email. Um, I was able to um, present her with options for services, um, such as like the parenting class and to start with her ADAC assessment. Um, she actually did um, sign up and have a date for an ADAC assessment, but her and Mr. Boyette were both no-shows at that ADAC assessment on April 1st. Okay. Now, you said that you didn't have um, any voice contact with her, and it had been a while that you could only contact her through um, through emails, and that she didn't initiate any contacts with you, correct? Correct. Okay. And that there had been a service plan that she was aware, and she was aware of that service plan? Yes, since about March. Did she notify you, uh, whether it be by phone, email, text message, um, that she had started to work her service plan or accomplish anything in regards to her service plan on her own without help from you? No, she hasn't. Okay. Has she actually shown any interest in her child? No. I've added up with the number of visits that she had. The, they've been virtual visits and they're relatively short due to his age. I've added up the amount of minutes that she's had with him and it amounts to about 35 minutes over the last year that right. she's had on virtual visit with him. Okay. So she was allowed even if she wasn't visiting in person, she was allowed virtual visits and over a year she's only spent 35 minutes with him. And that approximately been... yes her her visits have been on my calendar consistently for the last year um and she's participated in five of them out of about 50. Okay. now on her service plan if you recall what was she required to do in regards to that service plan um, follow the general rules, um, provide proof of safe and stable housing, provide proof of legal employment, maintain contact with the caseworker, um, submit to random drug testing twice a month, complete an ADAC assessment and follow the general rules, um, complete a, a relapse prevention plan okay. every time. Um, to complete a psychological and follow any and all recommendations, complete a psychosocial and follow any recommendations or treatment, complete a parenting class, complete a parenting plan, um, contact victim services to address the domestic violence um, from previous cases, um, and complete a mental health assessment. Okay. And she did none of those things. She has not completed um, anything on her family plan. And when was the department um, given a temporary managing conservatorship? Um, January 18th. Because it, it took a little bit for them to get back to Texas. Okay. Has she um, attempted to contact you in regards to providing um, any clothes or financial support or anything uh, for the child at all? No. no, she has not. And to my knowledge, she has never provided those things. Now, for a short period, I believe um, he was placed with um, a relative. Do you know if she had contact or saw him when he was placed with the relative? 
Um, all visits at that point were to be supervised by the department. But during a PC, um, we possibly learned otherwise. But as far as I know, there were no official um, visitations while she was at the caregiver's house. Okay. So when you say you um, learned that possibly otherwise that um, she wasn't supposed to be having contact, but the relative may have been letting the parents have contact. Uh, am I allowed to discuss what went on during the PC? Well, just at, answer if you know whether or not um, the placement was allowing visitation with the parents that shouldn't have been allowed. Mom hinted at it. Okay. All right. Now, when was the last time you had contact with the father? Um, much earlier in the case, I want to say when he requested to sign an AVR, um, probably March, I want to say, maybe April. And did he sign the AVR? No, he did not. And do you know why um, that did not, or did he change his mind? I guess this is the question. Did he change his mind? They stated that they were not comfortable with the wording on the AVR. Okay. And when was the last time you spoke with him? Probably the middle of March. And now did his service plan mirror the mother's service plan? Yes, it did. And what did he complete um, as far as the task or what he was asked to do in the service plan? He has not completed any items on the service plan. Um, Ms. Bates did schedule him an ADAC assessment for April 1st, but he was a no-show at that appointment. Okay. And did you also ask or try to uh, contact him about drug testing? Yes, I would always contact them both at the same time. Um, for a lot of the case, they were using the same phone number. Okay. So the, the dates that we went over for um, for the mother would be the same dates for the father um, as well. For the two times a month that you requested drug testing, when you requested her to test, you also requested him to test. Yes, that is correct. They're in a relationship. So I requested them to go together every time I requested. And we're... Were you uh, making contact with him by the same phone, I believe you said? Yes, through the first half of the case, they were using the same phone. And now at the beginning of the case, she did drug test and did he also drug test in January yes, of 2022? And was his drug yes, test results, well. was his drug test results concerning? Yes, they were. And would it be fair to say they were very concerning? Yes, they were. Okay. And as to his visitation, did he um, visit with the child virtually? He has attended um, less visits than mom. He was in attendance for three visits. Okay. Now... When the child was um, was born, do you know whether he was aware of mother's drug use? Um, I'm unaware if he was aware of her drug use, but he had admitted to his own drug use. Okay. And did he tell you um, what drug he used or did he admit it to using? No, he did not speak specifically to me about what he was using. Okay. What you knew to be um, a drug of concern for him, was that verified in the drug test results that he took in January? 
Yes, it was. Okay. And he admitted to someone else what he was using while he was in Tennessee. Okay. Now they were, they had the baby in Tennessee, but was living in Texas. There was there any reason why the baby was born in Tennessee? I can make guesses, um, but I do not know for sure as they never would speak to me about those type of Did things. Did you suspect that maybe it was to, uh, for some reason, um, be out of the reach of CPS in Texas? Yes, I do. Because of her previous CPS history and removals. And do you know how many children she's had total? She's had nine. Okay. And uh, how many of those children does she have custody of? She has zero. Okay. And do you know what happened with those other children? Were they um, um, placed through CPS or removed or... Do you know anything All. about where those children are? Yes, I know some are with um, fathers, some are with family, and then some have been um, adopted out to foster parents. Yeah. Do you believe that the department made um, reasonable efforts to be able to return uh, the child home? I do. And do you believe that you made not just reasonable efforts, but every effort to um, try to contact the parents so they could be successful and have their child returned? I do. Phone, email, stopping by their place of um, residence. Yes. Do you know if they worked in the area at all? Were they employed? Um, I was told that they were both employed, but she would, neither one of them would ever provide proof or um, tell me where, where they were employed at. Okay. And you're asking the court to terminate the right, the parental rights of the parents, correct? Yes, ma'am. And why do you feel it's in the child's best interest that the parental rights be terminated? The child deserves a safe, stable, loving home free of instability and drug use and domestic violence. And I don't think that that's something that the parents are able to provide at this time. Okay. And would it be fair to kind of categorize, characterize this case um, that basically the parents... Um, CPS took custody of the child and the parents basically showed no interest after that. That is correct. Now you said that the service plans for uh, both parents were made in order of the court. Is that correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I would ask the court to take judicial notice um, of its file and the entire contents and specifically the service plans that were um, created for both parents that were filed with the court. Any objections? Okay, the court at this time takes judicial notice of the entire contents of its file, uh, giving special attention to the parents' uh, family plans of service. Uh, judge, uh, can it be ex excluded any hearsay yes, that yes, is yes, contained? Yes, and that uh, that would be um, my judicial notice would accept any hearsay uh, contained um, in its file uh, and in either uh, family plan of service. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Wright, what um, safety concerns would you have in regards to the child if the child were returned to the parent? Um, safe and stable housing, 
um, their ability just to financially care for him, the consistent drug use, um, especially that the, the drug of choice that they have tested positive for, um, that he could, you know, be exposed to something like that again and have to go through withdrawals again. It was, it was very sad watching him go through that. Yeah. And what are the long-term, I know you said the withdrawals, um, I believe are the, the effects of the withdrawals have gotten better. Um, are there any long-term consequences for him uh, in regards to uh, the continued drug use? Not in the immediate future, but there has been um, educational delays and things like that noticed in children with sim similar history. Okay. Now, um, and I think I asked you, but what is the permanency goal for the child? Unrelated adoption. Okay. And the uh, pl current placement, is that a long-term placement for him? Yes, it is. Okay. And I guess I should ask, is the placement wanting to adopt him? Yes, ma'am, she is. Okay. Um, and do you feel that uh, if the parental rights were terminated, that that would be a long-term and best placement for him at this time? I do. I do, absolutely. So are you asking the court to terminate the parental rights of the parents and to name the department the permanent and permanent managing conservator if parental rights are terminated? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And are you asking um, that the parental rights be terminated um, because you feel also there's a continuing danger to the physical health or safety of the child and, con and contrary to his welfare if he were returned to a parent or a parent today? I do. And that's ba also based on the safety concerns that you just uh, testified, ongoing safety concerns that you just testified to, correct? Yes, correct. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Right, thank you, Mr. Ratcliffe. Yes, sir, you are, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I show that Mrs. Bates' address was Cougar Country in Buena, Texas. Is that right? That's incorrect. That's what? That's not correct. Okay, what is her address today? And <clears throat> you've had a whole lot of contact with her, mostly by emails, is that correct? Um, the, the, the second half of the case, it's been by email. The first half of the case, it was by phone. Okay. And did she ever uh, give you any excuses why she wasn't able to go take drug tests or, you know, work her services? Uh, as far as the drug test, I was told that she doesn't have a problem. Um, as far as services, she would always just respond, well, what do I need to do? To which then I would provide her a copy of her family plan or provide her information with where to start, like parenting classes or ADAC assessments. Well, did she say she didn't have any transportation? Uh, no, one of the visits were conducted in a vehicle that they were using, but um, we also offered um, transportation when we could contact them. Okay. Yeah. And you said she has nine children? Yes, sir. That include this child? Yes, sir. And eight children have have they been removed or she doesn't just she doesn't have custody of the other eight. Is that right? She does not have custody of any of the other eight. I know specifically at least three were removed um, from C with CPS care but I know that she does not have custody or visitation with any of them. Okay, the three that were removed through CPS, I'm just trying to get a handle on this. 
where they uh, threw a drug test concerning drug tests. Yes, they were. How old is the oldest child? Without checking my records, I'm not real sure. I know they live in another state. Just get um, teenager or possibly an adult at this point. Okay. How old is Mrs. Bates? I would say 39, 40, 41. Okay. And uh, of the nine children, and I'm just trying to get a handle on this now, how many different daddies? Three to five. Um, Has she showed any proof of employment? No, she's never provided proof of employment. Did she ever tell you that she was employed? Um, once she told me that she was employed, um, she did not provide proof, so she requested that we change the visit time to make it easier for her to attend the visit. So we changed the visit time, and I let her pick the time, and then that next week at the next visit, she did not show up as well. All right. Has she shown any effort from your observation of wanting you to get this child back? No, sir. When you would attempt to call her by own phone, would she ever answer? No, sir. So how would I get in touch with him? I don't know, sir. I don't even have a phone number for her right now. Thank you, non Tara. <laughs> what? How would I get in touch with her? Uh, I can provide you her email address. Um, the address that you have is is for a family member that lives in that house. Um, and she's requested me to mail stuff to that address a couple times. Um, but I, I, your guess is as good as mine, sir. I've tried. Okay. One last area of questioning, and I'm going to be through with you. I don't mean to go on, but you understand the importance that I have to play in this, don't you? Yes, sir. <clears throat> if there was an extension of this case to get her back on track, do you think that that would help any? As far no, as sir, I do not. Okay. You've had a lot of cases. How long have you been with CPS? A uh, little over a year, sir. Uh, have you ever had a case like this one where, you know, the mother just kind of walked away? I have three. Okay. I hope I'm not on the other two. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have the next trial coming up? Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Okay, good. Uh, can you tell the court when the affidavit of relinquishment was sent out, and especially in the context of when when contact was lost with with the parents um 
I'm sure. Know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to object to the question because one, I don't understand it, and two, I think it's kind of convoluted. I mean, it it asks for two different issues out of it. Well, when when was the ABR sent out? Uh, he, they asked to sign it. I want to say the end of February, the first of March. So I completed it and sent it to their respective lawyers. Um, but then um, we were told that they were not going to sign it because they did not like the the wording on it. All right, and characterize your contact, if any, with the parents subsequent to that. Um, with dad specifically, that was probably one of my last phone calls with him. Um, I saw them in person in the office, March. Um, they gave me their emails at that time, specific directions on the services that they needed to start. And that was probably my last contact with dad, except during um, the three virtual visitations that he attended. All right. Thank, thank you for that, for that answer. And um, did you discuss the AVR with Mr. Boyette? Um, I did not. Sorry, go ahead. Sure. And and I show that it was uh, dated February the twenty fourth of twenty two, and uh, you you say they were there for the uh, medical letter, but were were there further discussions of the uh, of any relinquishment? No. Um... I want to say after they read the AVR and I think they showed up possibly either to your office or to mom's lawyer's office. I don't remember which one. Um, she was in pain and they left supposedly to go to the hospital. And then that was really the last time that we had discussed it. Do you, do you believe that the form of the AVR was, um, uh, and, and I'll represent to the court that I've never met Mr. Boyette. Um, I do remember the discussions, uh, but was the form of the AVR, to your belief, was it the same as your department uses on every case? Your Honor. I, I'm going to object to the line of questioning. There hasn't been an AVR. There wasn't one filed. They didn't sign one. I'm not even sure what benefit it has to continue in this line. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to grant a little a little latitude. Um, there was something in it objectionable, but just a little <laughs> latitude. Not not too long. Not too much. So, how, 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 well, how, 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 you 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 testified that the the parents had a quarrel with some of the language, or that's what they told you. I just recall them saying that they did not agree with the wording, but it is a standard form that we've used for many cases. I used the same form for one that was signed in December. And I, I think I would ask the same question of the father if if he were given more time, you know, like more and more and more, would that change where we are on this case? Since he's attended three visits out of 50, I do not believe extending this case any further would be to the benefit of the child. Thank you, uh, Pastor Witness. All right, thank you. 
Ms. Wright, you mentioned the signing of an affidavit of voluntary relinquishment in December. That was not in this case, correct? Correct, but it's the same form. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Keating. Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that I, I was doing all that. <laughs> no. Um, Don't be. No, thank you. Uh, Ms. Wright, at least two of uh, Ms. Boyette's nine children now have been adopted, correct? That you know of? Correct. And two more were that terminated in not I'm sorry, and two more were terminated in Iowa, and I understand. Is that your understanding, too? Yes, that, that sounds much more familiar, familiar now that you're mentioning that. That's kind of why I said it like that. Um, yeah. Would, and, and you've been asked if an extension would be beneficial. They haven't done anything so far to even indicate that they're interested in the child at all, have they? No, they have not, and he's precious. Right. He's a good, he's a beautiful kid, isn't he? He is. He was my first, my first baby. <laughs> well, that, then he's a good one to have had. I'm glad. He is, yes. Would you, would it be fair to say that neither parent has cooperated with you? That is, that's correct. Or done or started even anything on their service plan? Other than making an appointment for the ADAC assessment, they have completed nothing and started nothing. And they didn't show up for the ADAC assessment, did they? No, they did not. So they made an appointment but didn't show up. That's correct. When exactly was the last in-person visit with uh, EB by either parent? Um, it was the beginning of January. Um, before I believe we got TMC, mom tested positive for COVID one day. And then the next day she had her in-person visit with him and then she gave him COVID. And that's been the one visitation on record that the department knows about. When was the last um, virtual visit? Mom's last virtual visit was in September, I want to say. And I think dad's was in June or July. Do you believe, and I think that Ms. Walker already asked you this, but do you think that the department has done everything within your power to reunite this child with his parents? Yes, sir. Have they done anything to show that they were interested in being reunited with him? No, sir. And they haven't provided, to your knowledge, any support for EB at all, have they? No, they have not. And the visits have been at most sporadic and only virtual even was the last one. Would you say that, true? That's correct. And the last in-person was actually in January. Is that what you're saying that you're aware of? Yes. January of last year, let's put it like that. That is correct. Okay. Do you believe that their actions and lack of care and taking care of EB show that they've just basically abandoned this child in the care of the department? Yes, I believe so. I think that they feel like he's pretty much better off being in the care of the department or with where he's placed? I do. And he indicated that uh, the current placement's willing to adopt. Is that right? She is. Okay. Um, do you know whether or not she has begin, begun the process or is she an approved adoptive foster, foster to adopt home? Yes, she is. Good. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, I think Ms. Walker covered just about everything that I was going to make notes of, but... Uh, Is there any indication that you have received that either one of these parents care any care even about this child? 
Unfortunately, no. Would you say that this is consistent with their past actions? Yes, their history with all of um, the children. Especially the mother, right? Yes. No further questions, Judge. Pass this witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Back to you. I have no further questions and no further witnesses, Sean. All right. Thank you. Any witnesses, Mr. Ratcliffe? Only if my client was present, Your Honor, and I think you called for her. And uh, if you could just call again and see if she's present. I will. I will do that. Uh, and um, I'll do that for Mr. Uh, Tracy's client, the father as well. First, uh, the mother, Crystal Bates. Crystal Bates, Crystal Bates. And again, uh, what about the father, Kenneth Boyette? Kenneth Boyette, Kenneth Boyette. If you all are uh, by phone, you'll need to press star six, unmute, announce your uh, presence, uh, though I don't see... Uh, phone at all. I recognize all of the names. Um, do not see the name, nor is anyone presently in the waiting room. All right. So do you rest, uh, Mr. Ratcliffe? Just one more question to the caseworker, Your Honor. And right. that's my protection. All right. Yes, sir. Were you able to give notice to them of this hearing today by email or anything? I form? was not. Uh, well, letters were made to their to their address, um, but personally, I was not able to speak with them and have them respond to anything, but they did receive letters, and the letters were not returned. Their mail doesn't come back to us. I didn't know us. if you contacted any uh, grandparents or, you know, mother-in-law or the father's mother or anybody like that. No, other than the letter that was sent out, no, sir. Okay. And you said the letter was never returned, undeliverable or not accepted or anything like that. Is that right? That's correct. All of the mail that we have mailed them over throughout the case has um, has not come back undeliverable. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Uh, yes. My position would be the same as Mr. Ratcliffe's and you've satisfied me that the client is not in attendance. And uh, I would ask the caseworker if there has been a financial contribution from my client in the form of gifts, uh, clothing, money. No, sir. With that, I rest, Your Honor. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Keating. Yes, Your Honor. I don't have any witnesses. I do have one follow up with Ms. Wright. All right. And I, I believe you're in a dual role, Mr. Keating. Yes. Correct. Yes, I am. Uh, Ms. Wright, the letter that you referred to in response to Mr. Rackler, that was sent to the last known address that we have, right? Yes, sir. And that's the address where I attempt to, to stop and visit with them every month as well. Gotcha. Thank you. Your Honor, I, I don't have any further questions, and I do have a recommendation. All right. Uh, I will uh, receive that uh, now. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I do believe that the department has proved by clear and convincing evidence that, one, to begin with, these parents aren't even interested in this child, which is really really devastating to, I think, myself and I know to Miss Wright because it's such a good child. Um, but I also think that evidence has been shown beyond clear and convincing evidence even that uh, the parents' rights should be terminated under 161001B1D, E, N, and O. I believe that all four are appropriate. Um, I think that they have ba basically abandoned this child in the care of the department, failed to support him, and have definitely done nothing on their service plans, and both tested positive or admitted to 
use of illegal substances that could have and did indeed danger this child. All right, thank you, Mr. Keating. With, uh, with that, um, I will uh, receive uh, brief uh, closing statements um, should anyone uh, desire to make them. Uh, Ms. Walker? Add wave closing, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Mr. Ratcliffe? Just one, one uh, statement, Your Honor. Of course, I have to take the position that uh, termination is not in the children's best interest, but based upon the judge's ruling and uh, the testimony here today, uh, if necessary, I'd ask that the file be sealed. That's all, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Tracy. Uh, Your Honor, I would not have any additional matter to argue beyond the evidence that's before the court. All right, Mr. Tracy, thank you. Uh, anything further, Mr. Keating or Ms. Walker? Just, just one for me, Your Honor. I do believe it's in the best interest of the child that parental rights be terminated and have, that he be allowed to be adopted. All right, thank you. Anything else from anyone else? Okay. All right, uh, the court will make the following findings. Uh, first, uh, that it does have uh, jurisdiction uh, of this child and over these parties. Uh, the court finds that all of the parties have been properly served, that all necessary parties are proper, properly before the court. Uh, the court further finds that um, Kenneth Boyette is the father of the child, the subject of this suit. The court finds that the department has made reasonable efforts to reunify this family. Uh, and that the department has had managing conservatorship for more than nine months. With that, uh, based uh, on the clear and convincing uh, evidence, uh, the court uh, does find that it's in the best interest of the child for both parents' rights to be terminated. Mother on the following grounds pursuant to 161.001, uh, B1, D, E, N, and O, the father, E, N, and O. So having terminated the rights of both parents, the department is named the permanent managing conservator of the child, and I will sign an order to that effect as soon as it's presented to me electronically. The court also hereby sets the uh, initial permanency review after final order for March the 15th.